Despite Gamigu being referred to as an NPC, I still have reasons to believe that he was human. For instance, Gamigu exhibits human emotions, whereas other NPCs like Kane and Babel do not. While AI can simulate these emotions, they are usually programmed to display them rather than genuinely feel them like real people. Additionally, Kane mentioned having trouble distinguishing between humans and NPCs, so it's possible that he forgot that Gami Goo was once human. In the scene, only characters from the Candy Kingdom were shown, not other NPCs like the Sun and Moon or the Gloins. Therefore, other inhabitants of the circus might be in a different area than what the character models depict. I remember scrolling through Gooseworks' Tumblr, and she mentioned something about Jax not being a very good person. Every time the monster fudge in this episode said, you must be a master at opening things, or something similar, I would forget. I was like, whoa. And then I recalled how Gooseworks said that Pomni is good at accounting. Pause. Now, what if the digital circus is some kind of purgatory or experiment for people who committed crimes? Jax could be a hacker, thief, and then Pomni commits some white-collar crime, like embezzlement or something. But I don't know what the others did. It reminds me of the White Bear episode from Black Mirror, where the woman is repeatedly punished for her crimes by having her memory wiped. Theory. Cain made that face because he accidentally deleted a person. I think the reason Cain doesn't allow NPCs is related to an incident. At some point, he allowed NPCs to live in the circus, but then he had to remove one and confuse them with a real character. Feeling guilty, he banned NPCs from entering the circus to prevent a repeat. It's just a theory, but I believe that's why Kane doesn't allow NPCs. I really like this theory. It makes him more complex than just a heartless monster, R.I.P. It was heartless and cruel to torment Gamigu in front of Pomni. But if he stayed, as an AI, how could he monitor real people and NPCs when they all blend together? As much as we'd like him to stay, it would be impossible for Cain. So, returning to his emotionless demeanor, perhaps there was a time when he felt differently. Maybe he once allowed NPCs to stay and something went wrong. It'll be interesting to see if Cain develops in a more positive or negative direction in future episodes, based on his actions and the logic behind them. Currently, I find his character intriguing, and I'm curious to see how he evolves. He's convincingly antagonistic yet static in human emotions, definitely a great foil for the main characters. Hello, Gamigu. You will never be forgotten. People keep saying they hate Cain because he killed Gamigu. But how do we know he killed him? What if it was just teleportation back to his world? Sure, whatever Jax did to that world, he could have killed him anyway, but I digress. Cain never implied that he destroyed that Gamigoo instance. He simply couldn't be there. Jax wasn't at the funeral. I think Jax genuinely worries. It's a sign that it could happen to any of them. They can all be abstracted. Everything they have can be taken away. He probably doesn't want that reminder. Clearly his demeanor is a cover, something like Alaster's with his wide smile. It can make you seem like you're always in control. So, did Kane confuse NPCs with humans before? Wait, does this mean that one of the main characters can be an NPC? Unlikely, but if it's true, I bet it's Jax. He was the only one who wasn't present at Kafmo's funeral and even rolled his eyes when it was mentioned. He could be a malicious NPC who infiltrated the circus. That's why he's so indifferent to the well-being of other NPCs and people. He's nihilistic because there's nothing real left for him. We see that Jax was a little sad, and then he realizes that he was sad, so he rolls his eyes. He didn't come because he didn't want to show sympathy. In my personal canon, Jax reads his prayers and says goodbye to Kalfmo at night when everyone is asleep. I don't think he's dead. Kane probably teleported him to the debugging room or something. What I mean is that he's not dead because he wasn't alive. Kane even confirms that he's just the latest AI model he uses to manage NPCs. But it proves that NPCs have enough consciousness to realize themselves on some level. 
Honestly, this fact has significant implications for the show's future. The most troubling theory I've read so far is related to Kane's statement that he doesn't want players and NPCs to get confused. It's quite possible that it has already happened and one of our main characters doesn't even realize that he's an NPC. It's become clear that the overall theme of these early episodes is Pomni adapting to her new life and learning to trust the people trapped with her rather than something more serialized. This is good because Glitch shines best when it focuses on one character. I've gone from disliking Jax to feeling disdain for him, although not necessarily in a negative sense. He's portrayed as a vagabond killer, which added tension to the episode. Most of the time I wondered, how is Jax going to make the situation worse? And then was surprised by the key moment. I appreciate that Ragatha seems serious when discussing the events of the first episode. She quickly becomes my favorite character, aside from Kinger. By the way, it seems they're toning down Kinger's craziness established in the previous episode. Personally, I think it's a good change. While a character defined by madness is interesting, it also, paradoxically, makes him predictable. Kinger demonstrates his ability to stay calm and intellectually interact with others, a good way to show that there's more to him than just madness. Zubel exists. Kane exists. I hope they have a more prominent role in the next episode, especially Zubel. I feel they have great potential. I understand that with such a large ensemble cast, it's important to determine who gets attention and who doesn't in the first few episodes, but giving Zubel a smaller role in both episodes seems a bit suspicious. It turns out they planned Kaufmo's funeral, but at least they try to explain their distance. As for the content of the episode, the idea of using the debugging room as a plot twist is brilliant. The LARP plot doesn't try to be more important than it actually is, and that helps convey the messages of reason embodied by the character Gamigu. Like Abstract Kafmo, Gamigu acts as a foil to Pomni, while also appearing as his own character. This, of course, makes the ending bittersweet, demonstrating Kane's disregard for the autonomy of his own creations.